Good morning and a happy new year. 2012, what a great way to start the year by gathering together as the body of Christ and worshiping our born and risen Savior. Let's stand together as we join together in worship.
shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Say. salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave you know this time of year it's popular for people to make resolutions or goals of what they want to accomplish this year and the good news is, is that we serve a god through all things are possible, that if we put our trust in Him, we can accomplish anything. Water you turned into wine, open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you, and none like you. darkness you shine, out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, and none like you, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are high.
continue in an act of worship this morning. We invite the ushers to prepare to receive this morning tithes and offerings as we give back out of the bounty that God has given us.
as we prepare for prayer, I didn't realize until yesterday that I'd had this privilege. For three years now, I've been working on a workshop. Now, that may not mean much to you, but it did to me. A dream that I've had for years that I'd have my own workshop because I like to do things with my hands. Well, a lot of times when I wanted to be working on the workshop, there were other things that were more necessary, like helping someone else, doing something that is part of my ministry. And so the years kind of drug by, slipped by. And last week, I really kind of jokingly told people that I was praying for a week of perfect weather between Christmas and New Year's. Darren was off work, and we could get the roof put on my workshop. Do you know when in December we've had such beautiful weather as we had last week? Sunshine, no wind. Friends came to help, and yesterday we finished up the, the roof on the workshop as far as we could finish it at this moment. God is great. He's great in the little things and in the big things. Well, today uh, is January 1st. And I understand that a young lady by the name of Amber Mann turns 13 today. Happy birthday. Also, I uh, am reminded that today is the last Sunday that Bob and Kay Lothanor will be with us because they're taking the church again. It's been great having them in our fellowship. And uh, while they're going to be assigned in Sherman, they're still part of our fellowship. We'll consider them part of ours. You know, as we look into the new year, there's a lot of uncertainty. The only thing you can know for sure is that there will be change. And change brings uncertainty. And as we think of the uncertainties that come to us, it's probably best that we don't know what's going to happen. Stop and think about it. Some of the trials, maybe sicknesses, maybe accidents that occurred during 2011. If you had known about it on January the 1st, 2011, you would not have been able to handle it. But God gives us grace day by day and uh, the uncertainties are taken care of as we work with, walk with God. But as we enter into 2012, there are six things that I have certainty that you will need. You will need a, you'll need for prayer. There will be a need for trust. There will be a need to obey. There will be the need to forgive. There will be the need to be faithful. And most of all, there will be the need for Jesus. As we prepare our hearts now for prayer, remember that this is the first Sunday of the month and we will ask you to come and stand if you'd like to be anointed for prayer. Is Kim here? Okay, Kim's here. Nathan, could you help us this morning? And Kim and Nathan are here, and so if you'd like to be anointed for prayer, uh, come down to the altar, and if you would like to come to the altar for any reason to pray this morning, that's certainly always in order. And let us uh, bow our heads as we prepare for prayer. Maybe it would be good to stand, and that would make it easy for those who would like to come uh, to the front, to the altar. It is a family altar, and if you'd like just to come and kneel at the altar while we pray, that's 
is perfectly in order. If you have a need for a physical touch, come. Or if you want to come in the place of someone else, you can do that. And our elders here will pray with you. Let us pray. How great you are, God. Our words, the words of songs, the beautiful melodies that go with the words, cannot describe how great you are. We are completely in awe when we stand before you, our creator, who has done so much for us. We have no reason to expect mercy. We've done nothing to earn salvation. And yet, out of your love for us, you sent your son, Jesus, whose birth we have just been celebrating and Jesus came not just to live, though he lived in a human body, he came to die, that we might live, that we might have life eternal. And we thank you that as Jesus comes into our hearts today, we're not only living for eternity, we're living for today. And we realize as we look into the year of 2012, there will be things that we cannot even imagine today, but we'll need you. More than anything else, we'll need your grace, your love, your strength, your power. And for these things we ask today, we pray, Lord, that you would be with these that have come for healing. You know their needs. We pray that you would look down just now. Not that the oil will heal, but that thy mercy would be upon these and their needs. Be with those that may be represented, representing someone else today. We thank you for our grandson Christopher today three months he's been suffering with a bad ankle and foot trying to be a missionary and we pray Lord today that he would go where he is miraculously touch him as you will touch others today we pray Lord today for our work team Pastor Terry, Pastor Brett, and all the other members of the work team in Belize, would you be with them today? Give them safety. Help them to accomplish the things that they've gone to do. Keep your hand upon them. We pray for the Lothanors today as they take on this new assignment. Would your grace and your strength be with them, and they might have a marvelous ministry in Sherman. And Lord, we know today as we stand here, and we thank you for what you've done. I thank you for your blessings in my own individual life. And I looked to tomorrow. I know that in my own strength, I cannot accomplish what needs to be accomplished, not even what I would like to do. But as we have been singing earlier, through you, all can be done, and we're grateful for that. We would not forget this morning the requests that are in these bowls here at the front of the church. You know about each one. And we pray that your power and your strength would be manifest and these needs would be met. Be with us today, not only today, but throughout the entire year. 
It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, we have newlyweds. Okay, good. Thank you. Well, good morning. I am honored and humbled at the very moment to be standing up here. Um, I bring you news from Belize to begin with. I've gotten to speak with Pastor Terry and um, actually a couple of the others as well when they answer the phone. They are doing extremely well, accomplishing a great deal. They have made reference to getting a lot done. They're ahead of schedule. I understand they will be actually getting to go back to Balpamon, is how you say it, and doing a little more work there. But it is going well. They've lifted tresses, built them, lifted them, uh, moved them, working hard to work on this little church that they have been building for the people in Belize. Everything is going well. There's been a few minor injuries, the end of a thumb and a shin and a couple things like that, but nothing of any great um, significance is my understanding. Of course, if it was my thumb, I might feel differently. But uh, at this point, it seems to be going well for them. Pastor has spoken. They have uh, ministered to children and adults. If you get on the website, or at least if you can get to Cindy Nicolai's Facebook, you can see some pictures of what they are doing. So it is going well. It's productive. They will return Thursday night, 11.35 p.m. Their flight is to arrive back home. So they still have some work ahead of you. We thank you for their prayers for them. But because of that absence and such, I have the privilege of standing before you today. So I asked that we do our moments of friendship at this point in the service this morning. I would like for you to take this time now to greet one another, but I ask you to do something very significant when you do it with a purpose. Excuse me. I under, are the children to be dismissed? Okay. Would you, children, I understand you are leaving us this morning and going to Children's Church, so would you please stand and follow Miss Kim, Pastor Kim, out of the sanctuary? As they are doing that, let's go to moments of friendship. But I want you to very deliberately make a point to speak to people in affirming ways. Would you say something very, very positive to whoever you speak to this morning? Would you compliment them, encourage them, thank them, something? So at this time, we'll take a few minutes for moments of friendship. Thank you. Splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God. Well, what a joyous time as you work your way back to your seats this morning. 
What a beautiful sight, what beautiful sounds listening to you encourage one another, the smiles on your faces. It appeared there was some done with great excitement and anticipation. Some, I don't know if it appeared to be easy for you or not, but it was fun to watch, and I wonder how it was in your perspective. If it was easy for you to participate in this, if it was exciting for you, if it was disappointing, if it was uncomfortable, I actually saw expressions that probably showed several of those emotions or those thoughts in all of you. And if it was easy, it makes you wonder why. Why was it so easy for someone to go to another person and share something very positively? But it could be simply because you love that new outfit she has on. Woo! And you just wanted to tell her. Or you wanted to thank someone for a meal that they've brought into you or a card that they have sent to you recently. Maybe you uh, were uncomfortable with it because it's just not your thing to really go visit. You don't know anyone very well. Some of you were greeting old friends that looked like or family. Maybe it was downright disappointing because not a single person came and talked to you. Oh, you stepped out, you stood up, but nobody really came and said anything to you. You didn't hear anything very positive or encouraging. And maybe some of you simply did it because you felt obligated to do it this morning. You know, I asked you to do it. I'm the speaker and pastor's wife, and oh dear, maybe we better do it. And plus, we've made this commitment, you know, to um, our children all the time. We have a dedication that we're going to help them find Christ. I need to set a good example, and what will the people around me think if I don't participate? Whatever the reason it was, or however it was for you this morning when you did this, my next thought is, how did it compare with your communication with God? Is it easy to communicate with him? Do you simply do it out of obligation? Check that off my list. Is it disappointing? It's a struggle, uncomfortable. How important is communication with God? Communication with God simply is prayer. If we said, if I asked any one of you to define prayer, I believe you would say words like it's communicating with God, it's saying, talking to him, it's listening to him. It would be some form of communication with him. That's easy. I think the world can tell us what prayer is as well. But is it important? Yes, it's important. I don't think any of us would deny that. I think we'd say it. I think we're quick to tell people that we'll pray for them if they're struggling or hurting. It's not a problem. It is very important to spend time communicating with God. It's throughout the entire Bible. You can go back to the beginning with Adam and Eve, perfect communication with God. Walking alone in the garden with him in the cool of the evening. Wow. Wouldn't that be amazing? And it was like that until the fall. And then it became very uncomfortable. And they hid. But throughout the Bible, people communicated with God. Abraham, Moses, Hannah, pouring her heart out to God, asking for a child. The priest thinking she's drunk. David, who of us cannot connect or relate to David on some level? We've been tempted. We've all given in. We've all sinned. We've been down in the dumps. We've been discouraged. We've lived with the consequences of our sin, even though they're long gone. And we've lifted him up in praise, called him by name. I mean, David gives God so many names. His rock, his fortress, his strength, his salvation. On and on, David makes reference to God in different ways. And on through the prophets, they communicated with God. And then we get to the New Testament, to Jesus Christ, our ultimate example. Did he pray? Yes. He taught his disciples how to pray. They asked, and he gave them the Lord's Prayer. He broke five loaves and two fishes and four and made miracles simply by saying, thank you, God. And he passed it out. It doesn't tell us he went into some big, long, elaborate prayer. He simply said, thanks to God, and passed it out. 
It also makes reference to him praying for himself, praying for his disciples, and praying for us, the believers to come. Wow, we were prayed for by God's own son. There were times that Jesus went alone. In Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, he went alone to pray. He went to the mountains alone and prayed. He put, got away from the crowd and sent them away and prayed. If prayer is, was, was important for God's son, is it not vital and important for us? So I believe that there are a few areas this morning I would like for us to hit on, to think on, to take you possibly in the year 2012, maybe in a new walk with God, something different, something deeper. Some of you may do these already, but I'd like us to spend a few moments thinking about prayer. The first would be praise, that of praise. And that's why we started today a little bit of you. I wanted you to affirm one another. Who doesn't like to be affirmed? Oh my goodness, when Molly runs to me and says, I love you, BB, it blesses my heart. I love it. And Aiden, to wrap his arms around me and smother me in a kiss and tell me he loves me, it, it thrills me. And Molly has a great knack of looking at me and saying, BB, you're so pretty. She's three, I know, but it's okay. I like to hear it. It's wonderful. Who doesn't? Well, your father is the same way. He wants to hear from you in that same way. He wants you to lift him up and to bring him praise, adoration, affirmation. Does he need it? Does God need to hear you say that? Oh, he doesn't need to be reminded. He knows it. He knows who he is, but you need to be reminded. I need to be reminded regularly of who God is, of what he does. The scripture tells us in Psalm 115, there are a few verses there I'd like to read to you this morning. Psalm 115, beginning at verse 4. But their idols are silver and gold made by the hands of men. They have mouths but cannot speak eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but cannot hear. Noses, but they cannot smell. They have hands, but cannot feel. Feet, but they cannot walk. Nor can they utter a sound with their throats. Those who make them will be like them, and so will all who trust in them. It has been said we are what we worship. If we choose to worship objects, material things, that's who we are. But if we choose to worship the God of the universe, if I asked you right now, could you just throw out at us names of God or attributes of God that are significant to you? Would you mind doing that? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Strength. Strength. I didn't catch that one. Rock. Rock. You're throwing them out. Go for it. What a beautiful sound. What do you think that's doing to God? I believe you've chosen some names and some attributes that are meaningful to you. To be able to say those out like that and quickly, and they were in such a way that I didn't, I didn't catch them. God did. God caught them. We need to be reminded of who God is. We need to be reminded of what he has done for us for our own sake so that when I face life every single day, it's right there. And I can be reminded that God was with me before when I went through that. God stood beside me. God provided. God was my rock. He was my mercy. God forgives me. Any of the titles or attributes that you would say, not only for your own benefit, but we have children and grandchildren. We have baby Christians that need to know that God is those things, not just in this book, but in your life today. That God is really the God of the universe, that he is really the creator, that he is really your comforter, that he is really your savior, your healer, your deliverer. We sang some amazing songs today. I sat in that pew this morning going, you are so amazing, God, because I did not give Nathan, talk to him until yesterday about what I was speaking. 
and it was very brief, and yet we sang songs that listed God as our shelter, our deliverer, our portion. How awesome. If you spend time focusing on those things, if I spend time focusing on who God is and spending some time just praising him, not asking him my list back here, okay, God, this is what I need, not that he doesn't want to hear that, but I think you need to take some time, and I challenge you to take some time to just praise God, to lift up the names of God that are meaningful to you. Names of God, take your Bible and go to the Psalms and highlight names of God or list them on a piece of paper and then read them. Spend your time, some quiet time, just reading them. Keeping that on your forefront. I think we need to spend more time praising God for what he has done for us. We spend a lot of time asking for things. We are very selfish people. I am. God points that out to me real often lately. I don't like it very well. I'm pretty selfish. I need to thank him. Thank him for what he's doing. As a matter of fact, a circumstance in, in my life right now, God has said to me, you need to just thank me for what's to come. I have asked for him to work in the situation. I have prayed about it. I try to leave it at his feet. I do good sometimes. But it's like, I don't know how to pray anymore, God. And he said, thank me for the miracles that are coming. Just praise God, praise me, because I'm working. And so my prayer is, thank you, God, for working. Thank you for moving. Thank you for working in this situation. Praise you, Jesus, for the miracles that are coming. I thank you, God, because you are working. You are working in my own life. You are working in the lives of others. Thank you, God, for what is ahead for us. I don't know what that is. I have ideas, I know what I want, but I'm thanking him for working and talking through me. The next area, would you go with me if you're reading, or it'll be on the screen, Psalm 46. And I'd say it holds one of my favorite passages, but I could say that probably wherever I go, so that's hard to do. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. There he is, right off the bat, David, giving you some names that you can praise God for. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Be still and know that I am God. Stop. Stop whatever you're doing and be still before me. That's what that scripture has meant to me for a long time. That's what I, it says to me. We live in a very chaotic, busy, busy, involved world. Now, I have to ask you, whose choice is that sometimes? Who chooses to be in the activities that you are, or the events you're involved in? Who chooses to send your children this activity, that activity, and get them to the practice and then go watch them and be a part of that? Who chooses to participate in all the things that you participate in it? Whether you are an adult or a child, who makes that decision? We do. We tend to be the ones who get ourselves involved. Not all of life is that way. Sometimes circumstances throw things at us that put us in such turmoil. And the part of that passage says that to me. I mean, mountains falling and the seas roaring and the foam. Doesn't that sound crazy chaotic? 
It does when I read it, and doesn't your world feel that way sometimes? Mine does. But it says, be still. Just be still. So in the midst of all that, stop and be still before God. Now, I will tell you, I have trouble doing that. I don't know about you, but I have a hard time doing that. It's best for me to do that first thing in the morning before anybody else starts moving at my house. Because once anybody's moving, I feel like I need to be going. But that also includes, for me, don't start that washing machine and then go sit and have quiet with God. Don't throw a load in. Because then I'm aware of that washer. My focus needs to be on God. And for a time, I need to stop my world. Even driving in the car is an amazing time to pray. I hear people do that all the time. I mean, Papa Art is one of the, one of the greatest warriors I know in prayer and saint of the church, somebody to watch. And he prays in his car. But I would dare say that even for him to stop in his world sometimes and don't be distracted by driving. You need time away from everything that you can focus on God. Now, if you can do that in your home, then you do it in your home. If you can do that and you have outside somewhere where it's peace and calm, then do it there. Maybe you have to get away and go away. Jeannie McCullough one time shared that she was in Washington or Oregon getting ready to speak. And while she was on her way, she said, God, I need some alone time. I need time all by myself. And she said, God did it. He put me on a ferry with a huge truck on this side and a huge truck on this side and a big truck in front and one in back. And here I was in my little car, boxed in. No one could see me. I had time with the Lord. So if you can't find it or you're struggling with it, what if we ask him, hey, God, would you give us some alone time? Show me when and where that can be. Where can some time with you that I can stop the world? I don't want to think about it. I need to just focus on you. And in that time, you focus on God. You picture him sitting at, at Jesus' side or you at his feet. Or picture him with some of those praise attributes that we just came up with a bit ago. Or the words that you pull out of the Bible. And you're not processing. You're just existing in his presence. You're just quiet in his presence. But if I, as I read and studied, a commentator said the Greek word for be still is rapha, which means to release, to let go, to become weak. So that takes it even further because that means the things that are a part of my life, the troubles, the circumstances, the situations, the laundry, whatever it is, my job, lack of a job, lack of money, too much money, whatever the case, I am to say, God, it's yours. I am to let go of it and to give it to God, to release it because it says, in my weakness, he is strongest. He shines the best in my weakness. Then it's not about me. It's all about him. So if we could take time to be still before God, Jesus did it. Jesus did it. He went alone without his disciples, without other people, God alone before God. He went to a place that he wouldn't be distracted. He even sent people away from him so he could have that time alone. So praise Lifting up God for who he is, his characteristics, his qualities. Being still before God. And the last area, or the third area, that I'd like to address. Do you believe there's a heaven? Do you believe there's a hell? Do you believe that you have to ask God to forgive you of your sins to be able to spend eternity with him? Have you taken care of that? Do you know someone who hasn't? Do you have a family member, a parent, a sibling, a child, a grandchild who does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior? They're going to hell. They are going to hell. What are you doing about it? Do you ever ask God to talk to him? Do you ever ask God to move mountains to let them be in a right relationship with him? 
Do you spend any time asking God to save them? Because they're going to hell if you don't, if they don't find that walk with God. That should be a priority on every one of our hearts. We should be praying for the unsaved people of the world. We should be lifting them before God, asking God to move mountains, asking God to work in circumstances, asking God to show them the ways that they are wrong. That's our, that's our responsibility. Prayer is a privilege. Prayer is a responsibility. So for the year 2012, can we stop and take some time that we just lift our praises to God? It's awesome that we do it in church in a corporate body. We need to do that. We need each other. I need you. You bless me so many times, just your words of affirmation, your greetings. I'm praying for you, whatever it is. We need each other. I need to hear your testimonies of how God's working in your life. But we also need to go by ourselves and praise God. To step aside and to focus on him. Not with our list of needs and wants. Just simply, wow, God, you created me. You are the creator of the universe. You are holy, holy, holy. You are the alpha and the omega. And then I need to take those times that I just stop. Sit in his presence and focus on him. Not saying anything. Just being still and allowing him to be glorified in me, to fill me, to let me know who he is, to reveal himself to me. And then praying for our lost family members, our lost neighbors, our lost friends, whoever, wherever, lifting them up before God, thanking God for working in their midst and bringing them into the fold. As we close today, whatever area that I've spoken on today that speaks to you and you need, I pray that you would take that one to heart. Man, if we did all three of them, wow. And some of you may do all that regularly. But as we go today, I'd like us to each think of one person that we know that does not know Christ. And we're going to just pause and take a few minutes to lift those people up. And then we'll end just praising God. So would you take a few minutes right now to just pray for someone who does not know Christ? And now in your own hearts, would you just lift up praise to God for who he is, for what he's done? Would you just praise him? God Almighty, our Prince of Peace and our power, Almighty God, Savior, Bread of Life, our Deliverer, our Healer, He who helps me overcome, 
my anchor, my rock, my fortress. Precious, precious Savior. We just praise you. We thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the gift of another day. Thank you for the beginning of another year. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for working in our lives, in our church, in our homes, in our families. Thank you, God. Lord, we leave now in your hands, and we ask you to work miracles. We are looking and watching for what is to come this year, for the miracles that are ahead of us, how you are going to work in our personal lives and in our families and in our church. I thank you for the miracles to come. I thank you for the change in our relationships with you because we spend time praising, we spend time alone with you, we spend time sitting in your presence exalting you and praying for the lost. In your powerful, powerful, precious, holy name, God, we just praise and thank you. Amen. You are dismissed.